G'day everyone. Today I'm going to talk to you about what I carry around in my bag, in my backpack when I'm out Murray cod fishing. A lot of my cod fishing is done walking the banks, so I carry a fair bit of stuff with me and you might be surprised at some of the little tricks and gadgets that I've got up my sleeve. So stay tuned and watch just what I've got in store. Rightio. Firstly, the bag itself. This is a Ridgeline of New Zealand bag. <laughs> I'm presuming it's made in New Zealand. This is a Ridgeline backpack. I chose this one from Adventure Camping and Fishing about three or four years ago. I chose it for no particular reason other than the fact that I liked it. And I picked it up, it felt strong and robust. And three years later, there's no sign of any wear and tear. It's a basic bag. It hasn't got 8,000 zips and little gimmicky pockets and little holes for my headphones. None of that fancy Nancy stuff. It's just a basic bag with quite a bit of storage space, capable of suiting my needs. Now, what's inside? Right. It's got two main compartments. It's got a back compartment and a front compartment. First, I'll go into the back. The back is the main compartment. And in here, I have a tackle box. <laughs> this is my tackle box. Oh, it's not really. I've got bigger tackle boxes at home. I've got all sorts of different tackle storage systems at home. But I can't take them all when I'm walking along the, the, the creek fishing. So I just take this cheap little $15 tackle box that I bought from a service station in Wangaratta. It's got no trays, no bells and whistles, but it holds all my lures. And if I look in there, there's, you know, there's a Zerek minnow. There's a big couple of Bassman spinner baits. Some big number one stump jumpers, some Coolabung cod walkers. A few Wilson slickbacks there. That's unorganised in the sense that it's all tucked together, stuck together and tangled up, but that's okay. I would rather that and spend a couple of minutes untangling, untangling the lures than have one of those white trays with the divider lines inside it, because I just think without those divider lines you can actually fit a lot more stuff into the tackle box. So, I'm not going to go too much into the actual tackle, this, this video is more about what's in my backpack. So I've got my tackle box with all my lures and stuff in it. I've got my water bottle with a couple of faded Bassman spinner baits and Stroy Tiger stickers. <laughs> Just an aluminium water bottle worth about $12 or $15, something like that. Nice and lightweight, carries plenty of water. I've got some air guard, or in this case, Coles insect repellent. I personally, I like this and I think this does every bit as good a job as the more expensive Bushmans and every bit as good a job as the air guard, the, the brand name air guard. As a matter of fact, these bloody flies, take that. I do find it's more effective on mosquitoes than what it is on blowflies. And I even spray it on my hair because they buzz around my ears. Spray it on my legs. But that is a must when you're walking the riverbanks in the summer months. Some sort of insect repellent, the one you prefer. A lot of fishermen tend to prefer Bushmans, but I just like the Coles brand insect repellent. I find that works very, very well. What else have we got in here? Down one of my side pockets in here, I carry an old asthma puffer. I'm an asthmatic. In fact, I'm a chronic asthmatic. And I take this with me. It hasn't got much left in it. In fact, I don't even know what the use-by date is on it. The ticket's all faded. But that's just a spare in case I forget my Ventolin. I might only have half a dozen puffs left in it, but that could be a lifesaver for me. So that gets tucked away. Now, this, this is ingenious. Have a look at this. That is a filter, a water filter bottle. Fill to pure, portable water filtration. I bought this at Adventure Camping and Fishing about two or three years ago. I was given a gift voucher there from somebody that I'd done a, a job for. And they, uh, they gave me a voucher and I went in. I didn't really need much at the time. I had a look at that and I thought, what a great idea. And I get so much use out of this. It's got, this is what I call the straw, which is attached to the top, which is the drinking part. That goes in the water bottle. I'm sitting on the banks of the Ovens River down near Yarrawonga at the moment, right down in the lower reaches. I could go and scoop that out of there, put that in, and that will filter out almost all of the germs. I won't filter them all out. They never rec they never say they get 100% out. I guess they've got to cover their ass to some degree. But I've been using this for two or three years, and I have not once been sick from using it. I would quite happily, now there's a big lagoon just over there with ducks crapping in it and whatnot. I would happily go and fill that out of that lagoon and drink it without worrying. In fact, I was at Reedy Creek the other day, which is not a good creek to drink, drink from because it flows straight past the beach turd farm. 
but I needed a drink and so did my wife while we were out photographing reptiles. I got this filter pure and I put it in, scooped up that water and I wouldn't have never drank that water out of that creek without this. We both drank the bottle between us, probably half a bottle each, and we didn't get sick. I don't carry that around with water in it. When I leave home, I always have the water in my water bottle. I don't carry water in this. That just makes it too big and bulky. I carry that and I use that first. That's a backup because the straws are rated to a certain amount of use. I can't remember exactly how much it is. But, so I only use it as a backup. I use it as an emergency if I need a drink of water. And even when I'm not fishing, I usually leave that in the car. So that if I'm out bushwalking, taking photos or anywhere, anytime, I can fill that up out of a nearby creek and have a drink. That is an absolute great idea. It's lightweight. And if you do a lot of bank backpack fishing, I cannot recommend highly enough fill to pure. And strangely enough, one of my best mates, Sandy Hector, you may know him as the camo man. He was using one of these years before I was. <laughs> he had one a long time and I thought he was nuts. Then I went and bought one and I tell you what, if I'd known how good it was, I would have bought it long before now. Right, so that's everything out of the back compartment. Let's go into the front compartment. In the back part of the front compartment, the front and back compartments have got a divider. So you've got a front and back of the back and a front and back of the front. I've got my digital SLR. This is my old digital SLR. This is a Canon 600D. This is far more than adequate for any of the magazine work and, and photojournalism work that I do. It's not a top of the range camera. I also have a 70D, it's got Wi-Fi on it and I use that for my landscape photos. But the only real difference is, apart from one or two megapixels, is that that takes a higher burst rate and it has a little bit better ISO capabilities and a heap of bells and whistles like Wi-Fi mode and HDR mode and stuff like that. But for fishing photography, just an old digital SLR, which this one's a 600D, is more than adequate. I've had magazine covers with this. I've had tons of magazine photos printed with this. This does a great job. It's an absolute workhorse. I have, I have, I have a brag mat. Now this is, a, I think it's a New South Wales Fisheries Department, New South Wales Department of Primary Industries. This is a New South Wales Fisheries brag mat. It only goes up to one metre. I actually won this in a photo competition, the New South Wales Fisheries Fishing Calendar photo competition that they run every year. I was actually on the, I won the January spot of the first calendar. The first month of the first calendar. <laughs> I won it with a silhouette photo of my good mate Sandy Hector. <laughs> but anyhow, I carry that with me, but that only goes to a metre. The, my biggest ever cod is 98 centimetres, so that's always served me well. But should I go, should I hook the fish of a lifetime? I usually carry a Swivels original backup tape measure anyway. It goes up to a metre in one centimetre increments. Once you get past the metre, it counts in 10 centimetres. So you've got one metre, metre 10, metre 20, metre 30, and yeah, it goes to a metre 30. And if I catch a cod any more than a metre 30, it's not really going to matter what it is. I could just tell you anything and you'll believe it because you'll be just in awe of the size of the fish. That's if that ever happens. In the words of Metallica, that seems to be the day that never comes. <laughs> in all honesty, I don't target a lot of big Murray cod. If I really wanted to go and target some Murray cod, I'd go down to the lower Murray River, I'd hook up with Rod McKenzie, who's an absolute gem of a man, and I would uh, I'd go and catch a big Murray cod. He's offered plenty of times to take me out. I keep telling him, telling him to come up here and kick some tiger snakes away from his feet. Right, what else is in the front of my bag? I've got some pliers. If you are quad fishing and you are not carrying pliers, then you are asking for trouble. I have had hooks in my hands, hooks in my fingers. I remember one night we forgot the pliers, my mate Brett Corker and I. And sure enough, that trip ended up in a hospital visit for Brett. <laughs> I've got a photo somewhere on file of Brett holding this Murray Cod, about 55 or 60 centimetres, and you can see an orgy lure just he's holding the fish up like this, and you can just see the lure hanging out of the back of his hand. We've got the photo, we put the fish back, then we ended up in hospital. It's very dangerous putting your hand down around hooks on Murray Cod because they'll sit there really still, then when they kick, they will shake the buggery out of that lure and it could end up anywhere. And most of us experienced cod fishermen have experienced the sensation of having a hook dug into us. I've had it happen five times and would you believe they were all in the one season? I think it was 2011 or 2012. I've never had a hook in my hand all my life. 
then bang, 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 bang. Five times in about two or three months. I haven't had one since. <laughs> I learnt after five times. But anyway, pliers. You have to carry pliers and try and get a set of pliers with wire cutters on them so that if the inevitable does happen, the cod hooks you in the hand and you end up with a little with a hook stuck in your hand. You can use the wire cutters to cut the barb off and reverse the hook back through or the pliers to crimp the barb. And if you can't get the hook out, you can cut the lure off with the wire cutters. That way you're not driving around with a lure hanging out your mouth and you can get to the hospital and let them do their job. Pliers, pliers are an absolute essential. I've got a knife. I don't actually use it a lot. I use it to cut braided line more than anything, but it's always good to have just in case any bushman carries a knife with them, no matter what they're doing and where they're going. You should always have a knife. Like I said, I only ever use mine to cut braided line these days because I don't keep very many fish, but it's always good to have it there if I need it. Fish grips. We've all got our favorite sorts. This is an Icon brand of fish lips with the scales on it. I've got these at Adventure Camping and Fishing. They're fantastic. In the past, I've used those floating, the fish grip they're called, the fish grip. They're, they're plastic, they're floating, some glow in the dark. They are fantastic as well. In fact, they're probably better for backpack fishing than what these are because they float, because these sink. But I lost mine, <laughs> like I, as you do. I seem to lose everything. So I ducked out and I bought these and they've been really, really good to me. Icon fish grips, once again, comes down to personal preference. Whatever fish grips you like are the ones that you'll want to carry in your backpack. And in all honesty, a lot of the times when I'm fishing, they're in my pocket anyway, and not my backpack for easy access. Now, the last bit, I've got this little waterproof bag. And in this waterproof bag, I've got a few essential items. I don't carry much in the way of survival stuff when I'm fishing. I don't carry a torch, unless I expect that I may be out after dark. Then I'll carry a headlamp or a couple of headlamps. But if I'm just going out during the day or something, I'm not expecting to be late, or I'm expecting to finish near the car somewhere, I usually don't carry a torch. I've got a mobile phone, it's got a torch app, and I like to make sure that's charged before I go out. But what I do carry is a first aid kit. It's just a small first aid kit, but it's got a few bandages and band-aids. It's even got a, uh, one of those little masks that you put on your face, so that in case you have to do mouth to mouth. Just imagine I'm fishing with big straws, Wayne Gardner. And he collapses and I've got to give him mouth to mouth. I don't want to be touching his lips with my lips. <laughs> so I've got one of those little, it's got one of those little shields in it that you can put between your lips when you give mouth to mouth. But seriously, folks, he's one of my best mates and I do it in a heartbeat for him. But this is the first aid kit. Just a good thing to have around, even if you just want the band-aids out of it. But it's got band-aids, bandages, and just a lot of basic first aid stuff, a little bit of disinfectant, eye patch. Not only is it good to have a first aid kit, it's good to know how to use it. I have level two first aid, which these days is called applied first aid, but I need that as a, work, as a requirement for my job, working as a disability support worker. But it's good to know how to use the contents of the pack itself. First aid kit. Now this is one that probably a lot of people these days seem to carry, but they never used to. That's a head sock. I've got two of these. I've got a deeper head sock, which was sent to me by deeper. And I've got this flying fisherman head sock which was sent to me by flying fishermen. <laughs> now, in summer, you can wet it. You can wet it and wear it around your neck and just help keep you cool. If it's sunny and you're gonna get sunburned, you can cover most of your face with it, put your sunglasses on, and then you're protected from the sun's dangerous rays, or the sun's harmful rays. And if it's not hot and you don't need it, well, you don't wear the bloody thing. And if you've, you're camping and you get out of bed and you haven't brought your hairbrush or your hair's messy, well, you just, put it on like a bandana like that and then no one can see how feral you look <laughs> but seriously folks a head sock is a great thing to have in your backpack something that i highly recommend it's lightweight it doesn't weigh much and it just comes in very handy i actually used that that very head sock up at lake buffalo a few years ago the temperature soared up over 40 degrees and i was baking in the sun thankfully i had long sleeves on and i pulled the head sock out and that's when I learnt to respect my head sock. Until then, I was never a big fan of them. But there and then, I became an instant fan. And although I don't wear one every time I'm fishing, I always carry one so that I've got it there when I need it. If all else fails, you can use it as a bandage. Now, last but not least, I often carry a deeper fish finder. You all know that I've sponsored by Deeper. I've made a few deeper videos. That's my fish finder. Now, all I have to carry is that. 
if I'm walking the banks in a spot like this, it's quite deep and open up, and I want to see whether there's any logs hiding anywhere because those logs that are under the water that we can't see, they're the spots where there's probably likely to be better fishing because they probably see less fishing pressure. So I can just tie that to any rod. If I've only got one rod, when I'm walking the bank, I'm normally only carrying one rod. I can put that on the end of the line of that one rod. I can pull out my mobile phone, which has the deeper app on it, and I can just cast that out and suss out the likely looking spots and the best looking spots to make sure I concentrate more casts on the places that matter rather than just casting willy nilly. A lot of the times walking the banks of the river, you're gonna cast the most snags anyway. But then when you get to a big hole, you might spend ages just placing casts and fanning them all across the hole. Or you can put the deeper on and you can see where the drop offs are and the logs and you can just concentrate a dozen or so casts to that one spot. That is why I just love this deeper unit so much. And then you unclip it off your rod, you put it back in this little bag, this little deeper bag, you put it back in your backpack, and then you cast to the spot that you found, and you may not use it again for the rest of the day, but it's there to help when you get to those spots that you just want to know where the drop-offs are and logs and stuff like that. So there you go, folks. I've got my fishing gear. Always carry plenty of water. Aerogard. Probably the things that I like the most. I love this water bottle. This water bottle is just fantastic. It's got me out of trouble so many times. A great way to prevent dehydration. And the fish sock is a very handy thing to carry. It doesn't matter what brand it is. You can actually buy them. The Burke Street Takeaway in Wangaratta. The milk bar across from Yurunga Primary School sells them with skulls on them. They look really cool. I've got one of them too. But they're just a great thing to have in your bag to carry around. And of course, always carry your mobile phone. Not just so you can use your deeper unit, so that if you get bitten by a snake or if something does happen to you, you can call Triple O and get yourself out of trouble in most situations, depending where you are. So there you go, folks. That's what's in my backpack. Cod season's next week and I can't wait. I'm going to be filming a lot of Murray cod fishing this year. I am just chomping at the bit to walk the banks and cast some lures again. So make sure, if you haven't done so already, that you hit subscribe under this video and click the little bell symbol next to subscribe so that you can see my Murray Cod Fishing videos as they come out this current season. Good luck to everybody heading out this season. I reckon it's gonna be an absolute beauty.